recording and uh, start the live transcript and share my screen, all sorts of things. Um, right. So welcome everybody. Uh, if you could add yourself, that would be great. In the last <laughs> chore you did with a thousand throw pillows, did they go like to the foot of the bed? Almost, the almost. I keep buying more because I just love them. And yeah, I think that the, it's like this little piece of section that doesn't have anything on it. Have you so, seen yeah. the, yeah, there's a, a commercial and it's the, uh, it's, it's not, maybe it's progressive. It's the guy about like being an adult when he's like, you know what I'm talking. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. I think so. The the the, the concept of adulting is that what you mean? Yeah. I, let me. Um, I'm pretty sure it's progressive, and it's like <laughs> it's just totally knocking on on grown ups. And there is one where he's standing in front of a sofa, and this this, <laughs> this lady has like a thousand throw pillows on the sofa, and he's like, "Nope, nope, you don't need those." And she, you could. She's like. Like her heart's breaking as he's getting rid of all the throw pillows. Yeah, you absolutely have to have them and they have to match the season or the like what's going on. So, I mean, I have my regular everyday ones, but then of course I have holidays, you know, all, all of them. Yes. So oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I will never give them up. Well, well, that's great. Well, welcome. <laughs> we now know about throw pillows and Elizabeth. Um, so welcome back. Um, we did have a short break last week, so hopefully everybody had a nice a nice break. Um, just as a note on this video, I think we all know here, but we are going to be taking a longer break. Um, so looks like we'll have maybe a couple more DEI working group meetings. I don't know. Is, is December yes. Monday, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah, it is. So next week will be the last one. Next week will yeah. be the last one. Okay, yeah. so next week will be the last one. And then we go on break for about a month uh, just to give everybody some time to attend to any burnout that people might be having. Um, that said, as we said in the community meeting yesterday, there'll still be work. We can just work on Slack. If we need to have any ad hoc meetings, that's obviously completely fine. Um, but hopefully you can enjoy just a little bit of time. All right. And then January 11th, there's a new, uh, the next newcomers onboarding meeting. Elizabeth, do you want to talk a little bit about what that is? Sure. Um, so basically, that's just a, a one way, not, not necessarily one way, but mostly just like a presentation kind of mode, as opposed to most of our meetings are a lot more interactive. It is more of a presentation mode, but it kind of goes over um, who chaos is, what we're about, how we came to be, what the different pieces of chaos are, because there's a lot that that's going on in chaos. So um, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around it for newcomers. So um, we just take about 45 minutes and do that. And we do leave space for Q&A, <clears throat> of course, um, and myself, uh, the community manager, and then Ruth Ikiga, who is the Chaos Africa community lead. Um, we usually host those um, sessions. They are recorded too, so if anybody's new and they missed that, no problem at all. Um, that'll be up on our YouTube channel. So, okay. right on. Uh, thank you. That sounds good. And when's the next um, office hours? Next week will be the last one um, on Tuesdays. They're uh, a little bit before the community meeting, so they are at 9 a.m. U.S. Central on Tuesday mornings here um, in the U.S. And those are. Uh, an hour long, just come and go as you want. Just pop in and ask whatever questions you have. Um, if you need more explanation on anything at all, that's what that's a great place to do that. It's <clears throat> extremely casual. And a lot of times we end up just talking about whatever random things we wanna talk about. So <laughs> it's very casual and just a fun thing to come hang out. We've actually had community members who have been in the community for a while. Sometimes we'll pop in just to say hi and connect with us because they haven't been able to make a meeting. So yeah, that's it's super cool. casual. Okay, right on. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so we'll go on to the next item. We had a, I just had a couple on here for today. People can add anything that they would like to the agenda as well. Um, so yesterday I had kind of brought up thinking about different stages that newcomers might be in. And I tried to, I'm trying to keep this like simple um, and, and accessible for people and also accessible for 
uh, like the folks of us that are on this call who are experienced community members. So that's not a lot of work as well, but it provides a nice path for people who are newcomers, like things that we could tell them. So I, I was just trying, I reduced it to three. We had called this the funnel, um, but I reduced it to three. And I just, I, I, I put examples in here and I thought maybe we could talk through this a little bit. So when somebody is, is brand new, this would be the example of what I have here. So when somebody is brand new, we consider them in the state of inquiry or a you know, state of exploring. And um, what we do is we encourage them to come to open office hours. Like that's, you know, so like if they join on Slack and they're like, hey, I'm completely new here. We say, why don't you just come to office hours? Just show up there and, and we can help you to kind of talk through the different working groups that we have or the different, um, you know, the things that you would talk about in office hours. And I'm, I'm sure that would fit with office hours with that. Like you can kind of just explain these types of things, All right? Um, and so then after the thought is, is that after participating in office hours, they would get an idea of what working groups might be of interest to them. So it could be the DEI working group, it could be the risk working group, it could be participating in events, whatever it might be, but they have a particular interest that they get by understanding what is in front of them with respect to office hours. Oh, and like Elizabeth, like as this in the office hours, you can point them to, this way you can point them to things like, there's a Slack channel for this working group too. And here's the time the working group meets. And so then participating would move, again, total example here. Participating would say, hey, we encourage you to join the working group for four times in a row. Like actually put it on your calendar and attend a working group four times in a row. So that could be a month because some of, some of the working groups meet. <coughs> And that could be every two weeks, so it could be two months, um, because some of the working groups meet every other week. So just it's like just trying to set up a cadence for a new member that they have something on their calendar, they know that they're going to participate in it. You know what I mean, or at least attend it. And I think my thought with four times in a row is that over that period, there will be action items that come up in one of those four or across those four meetings. And it's kind of, it's like going to office hours, identifying a working group, <laughs> attending a working group for a while, identifying an action item. So it's kind of like this, this, this set of things. Um, and then contributing over the course of those four weeks, um, offering to be part of an action item in the working group that you're attending. And it could be like, again, helping organize an event. It could be helping put together a metric. It could be thinking through uh, this list that we're talking about right here. It could be anything, but just kind of, you know, open up, speak like speak up or type up or whatever it might be. So it's just a way to, to help people kind of locate within the project a little bit. And then I'm hoping that, sorry, I'm talking a lot, but I'm hoping that over the course of like, say that month of contributing, like it, it's kind of then where the project I think starts opening up to them a little bit where they're like, oh, I have I understand that there's the DEI working group and I was able to make a contribution. I also see that there's the risk working group and I'm guessing it functions kind of the same. You know what I mean? And I might wanna join the risk working group as well. So just trying to, to locate a person in a particular place. I could, do you have any feedback or thoughts on something like this or comments? Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think it's a good idea. Another um, thing that Elizabeth and I discussed during the communications meeting, which wasn't actually much of a communications meeting, um, is, is the idea of if we could make it easy for people to figure out just how to create a metric, like for folks who want to measure something and formalize it, um, just having a process where, you know, it's, let's say participating in the working group is, is a form of engagement that some people will be suited for, and, and they may actually do that. But then if they want to create a metric, sort of make it easy, like pick a working group where you think it fits. Um, here's the template, uh, and then propose it as an issue in that working group and uh, come to the meeting and then walk them through the rest of the process of creating that metric. I think I think that sometimes our metric creation process gets a little a lot of steps 
uh, it gets a little overwhelming and bureaucratic, even for people who have done it for a while. And so that might, that's sort of in addition to what you're suggesting. Okay, have this in a small video. I'm reading the chat. I mean, to that to that point, I mean, maybe part of what we say is if you have a metric, if you're new to the community and you want to propose a metric, right? Like, still maybe go through these steps. <laughs> Come to office hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, like that could be part of it. And then I agree. Just join the working group for a while. I would suspect that a newcomer would be a little apprehensive to just like having never attended the risk working group, like <laughs> just issue a PR. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. I mean, I think some of the, I, I, I agree. Um, I, I think some of, some of the audience might be some of the folks already engaged who just want to create a metric because I don't, I don't think it's like a very clearly, it's not like a, I wouldn't characterize it I would characterize it as well documented and regimented, but I wouldn't characterize it as something that's easy to follow. Well, I agree. I mean, I've tried um, to. Make yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's, it's just no criticism whatsoever. Yeah, yeah Katie. I, I want to also, in terms of people just contributing metrics or looking to do that, remember we are also reaching out on the DEI side and trying to get input from the external community on metrics. So we might be getting people who want to contribute some sort of a metric from the external community that when we were trying to go outside and get things that weren't chaos member biased and find other groups. Oh, when when was that discussed? Um, it was like two months yeah. ago, I think. And Anita's still doing that. Yeah, she's still working on that. And work. Anita, Anita, you're here. So yeah, you're going to have people who might want to submit some sort of a metric. And they might be in other communities. And will we get them to attend our, um, our working groups? Um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I don't think I've really thought of how to get people to contribute. Uh, so I'm not sure of how to answer that question, Katie. So you're seeing more insights from people rather than people being interested in contributing. Okay, well, yes, most okay. of the insight of recent, we have got some really good um, insights from persons that are aware of the chaos metrics, which is good progress. And um, while some persons are still not aware of it, so like completely, they so were given an idea of, or if we're trying to get persons on board with metrics, I think we have to give them an overall vision of what the metrics are, which specific metric go with which working group and um, all of that, because most persons have zero idea about the chaos community and our metrics in the first place. Fair. So could I, is it okay to keep these as two separate but related things? Like the creation of a metric is kind of a very specific thing. Mm -hmm. I, a lot of what this is about is watching the newcomer channel on Slack. Mm -hmm. And people are just like, hey, I'm new and I want to participate, which is awesome. <laughs> but we don't have a real like set of things to do that are just super practical that would make sense to the people that are participating. Right. So that's what right. this is. Yeah, because I think that at least from my experience when people come and they like ping me directly or if they come to the newcomer channel they're like i'm here i want to do something what can i do so it's i love this idea of giving them like a checklist or like a list of things here are some action items you can take on your own time whenever you want that will help you kind of acclimate yourself to our community and get you to the point where you feel like you can participate. And then we want to get you to the point where you feel like you can actually contribute. So I really love this idea of giving them action items. Yeah. I and, really and, love. Go ahead. 
Oh, I said I would have loved to have seen this when I joined. Hey, yay. Okay. <laughs> it's it's resonating. All right. Um, Anita, did you? Yeah. Um, I said this action items would be good like to exist in the community handbook. So whenever we're handing out the community handbook, we know that we have everything there is to know about chaos and getting on board. Agreed. Sean, did you have a comment? Yeah, I was just thinking back to the community meeting yesterday and that that newcomer tagging system where if there's a task that um, is, an, is an open issue that we have folks that say we'll help you with this we'll walk you through it if you want to contribute like a real i thought that was a really supportive good idea um and apparently it, it didn't make the notes from yesterday so i gotta find the link in my history but again, um, that's additive to what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. It's like it's like along the same lines, there are there are some things that we can do to make it easier to help people find something to do, for example, and know that they'll be supported in the in the doing of it. It sounds like it's kind of down in this contributing part. Like mm -hmm. you know, like here, Yes, it's absolutely it down in the contributing part. Do within each And to Sean's point, maybe we make one of the action items under contributing something that ties back into helping a newcomer or helping like kind of, you know, like keeping that cycle going. Yeah, I think we can also like um, at this point indicate persons. I know we already have like the newcomers call that does this, but some persons feel more comfortable having one-on-one -on -one calls with members in the community that they can ask certain questions that they might not be able to ask in the newcomers call. So um, at this point where they're ready to start contributing and don't know how to do that, we can now say reach out to this individual or reach out to this individual if you have um, any additional questions in these areas or something like that. Yes, we most certainly could. And maybe that could be part of, so let me hold that thought. So the, the one, uh, let me put it in here before I forget. So like, um, so Elizabeth would, if we did something like this, would the onboarding, call or the office hours be able to potentially handle the capacity that may come from the newcomer channel? I, yeah, I think so. Um, we also have that teams spreadsheet that we're going to be putting on the community handbook that lists all the different teams at chaos, like not just working groups, but also things like, you know, the badging um, yeah. initiative and like all the different teams. And then on that spreadsheet does have a contact person. So we can easily point people to that. And it also that spreadsheet um, kind of gives an idea of what kinds of contributions usually happen in that meeting or in the on that team. So if someone's like wants to do software, for instance, well, here's Augur or Grimoire Lab, or here's also the badging bot or other, you know, badging. Like so there, so we've kind of tried to um, provide a little more context for folks as well regarding like what kind of skills they have and what their interests are. Okay. So I think that team spreadsheet, yes, yeah, there Shoya has linked to it there in the chat. Um, I think that's a really helpful resource and we can build that out as we go. That was that thing that we just, Matt, you and Ruth and I just kind of started like a brain dump. And so it will, it will evolve and like become more robust, I think, as we go, but it's a good starting point. So could, without like telling a newcomer to check out that spreadsheet right away, would, could we tell them to check it out? Like when they come to office hours, like, would that be, I'm just trying to do like the, the simplest thing yes. for you know what I mean? Because as soon as we we're like, check out, check out all the working group repositories and check out the spreadsheet and attend yeah. it, like then people are, it's like, wow. <laughs> like, yeah. We can't yeah. Do it. Agreed. And I, yes, we can absolutely point them to that during office hours. Now, do you think, so like your original question here, could we think about three tasks for three different stages? You Were you looking for three tasks within each stage? That's what I kind of 
Oh, you just meant three overall. Just one. So like if somebody comes into the Slack channel and they're like, hi, I'm new, I'd love to contribute. All we would say is awesome. Awesome to have you here. Please attend office hours and or the monthly onboarding call to start. Like just mm -hmm. go there, like you're, you're brand new, and that's full stop on kind of starting this inquiry, exploring. And then once they're in the office hours, that's where they have a chance to talk to you and talk to other people. And you can get a, like point them to, hey, these are the working groups we have. Hey, here's our, like the task list that we have, you know, the to-do list. Like we have a variety of things that you can start thinking about, but it's it, it's more verbalized to people in the office hours. And you, you may end up just kind of saying the same thing over and over in, in office hours. Like <laughs> here are the working groups, you know, but it's an immediate thing that somebody could do is join the office hours. Yeah, I'm just thinking, and I would really like to hear um, Shoya and I don't think Ruth is on the call um, or any of the, and like Toria, I think you're, you're newish here maybe. Um, is, that, is that enough? Like, I'm just thinking if I'm excited to join a project and then like the only thing I can do is just wait till that office hours comes around, like is that gonna squash my momentum or is that enough? You know what I'm saying? Maybe because I, I totally agree with you, Matt. Like, I don't want it to be overwhelming for them. Oh, well, now here's a list of 25 things you got to go do. <laughs> you but could also... do anyone you want. And you're like, oh, okay, I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah, I forgot it. <laughs> what, what about um, because you do want to keep that momentum going and you have somebody new join and you don't want to tell them they can't for a while? What about we give, have it so that if someone is interacting with the channel and we say we have regular onboarding or office calls on these dates. But in the meantime, if you have questions or you would like us to walk you through a project, please feel free to reach out to one of these people. We have a list of people who might agree to be onboarding mentors or something of the sort, like welcoming committee type of thing. Like, we'd love to show you the progress you've done with them or something along these lines. I'm taking notes on that. What are people's thoughts on that? Like, you know, whatever. I, 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 go ahead, Elizabeth. No, you go. I mean, I, I was just going to say that we think we have a, a I, I think that the proposed plan of having these newcomer meetings is good. I think, I think finding a way to, um, like one, I guess one vague concern I have is what about the people who don't have time to go to a meeting or for whom those meetings are in an inconvenient time zone area? And, and so f I, I, and so not anything, I think this is all great. I'm just thinking also about what are the things that, and I think Katie's thinking along the same lines, what are the things we can do for um, helping people that can't make those meetings or aren't able to be there? Do you think that the um, watching the onboarding video would be good? I mean, that get, does give a, a broad. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, um, I haven't watched it myself. <laughs> is the onboarding video is it pinned to the newcomer channel? No, but the um, the regular meeting. I think that well, actually, it might be. I'll have to look. Um, but we that do it every month. Really so um, what we record every month, so they could in, you know essentially go back and oh. just at any of them would be um, I would put a link to the recorded onboarding videos if you joined and you're excited to join us um please take a look at yeah uh previous months onboarding um and reach out to someone on this list of people if you have other questions in the meantime before our next onboarding session or office hours yeah, they, it is, it is pinned. actually, I just looked, it is pinned, um, that's pinned, the um, handbook is pinned, and also, um, well, a piece of the handbook, general terms we use, and then we also pinned a brief info on all the working groups and what they do. So those things are all pinned to the channel, but I don't know that everybody even looks at that. I never even think to look at the pinned stuff, to be perfectly frank, so... Yeah, we might have to make it yeah. more obvious. Yeah, we might just need to what? enter the channel. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Katie. Oh, I say interacting with the channel once a week, putting a 
here's our featured onboarding video yep. this week, or here's our featured pro tip for new people joining. Here is our suggested path of contribution or suggested path of involvement. Just once a week having a, you can have canned posts because they're not going to be in the newcomers channel for very long. So yep. you would only expect people to be following the newcomers channel probably for the first month until they get into their first set of meetings and then they'll mute it. Yep. So you could have a, a rotating can set that we just post one a week and rotate every five weeks or every six weeks or something. Yeah, and that could be the bot, the, our welcome bot. There we go. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Automated things. But yeah, if we just did a post like that regularly, it'd keep the channel active and keep them engaged. Okay. This is this is great. So it, it kind of it sounds like um from what I'm hearing, that that encouraging people to join the office hours or the onboarding call in person is a that's a good first step, and then also an, an automated response or a human response, like maybe once a week in the Slack channel. That's like, if you'd rather kind of get started sooner than waiting for one of these meetings, go ahead and and take a look at the current onboarding video because that might help you kind of orient yourself. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, and then it might just... be good just to have like uh, the onboarding section have a list of um, we could get a list of tips like it in the um, in the meeting minutes for the main uh, call. We could ask next time um, list your name and the number one tip you would have for somebody joining chaos so we have a list of those from people just by them coming to the meeting that's a good idea and then put those into the bot i like that i like that idea of asking the you're suggesting to ask the individual working groups like what would be the best way to to connect with us yeah you could even use simple questions like that over a couple of weeks in the but as the how are you feeling today prompt or whatever you yeah. do up at the top by the name oh, i like that oh that's that's a good idea too it's it's a way to ask the question without <laughs> without having to wait for people's responses and yeah. people just won't do it they'll think it's part of the fun interaction no i get it you're being sneaky <laughs> i love it um all right this is great um so maybe we could just start here and then we think you know, and then Elizabeth, if you have people joining the the onboarding session, like we could kind of just see how that goes. And like, if you're feeling confident that you're able to help people or whomever's in that onboarding or the open, uh, the office hours, I guess I should say, but you feel like you're confident in helping point people in directions that they might care about, <clears throat> uh, that might be just a, a great first step. And then... And then we could revisit this, like, um, whatever, you know, that whether it's four times in a row or whatever it might be. But I'm just, that's just trying to encourage that ongoing participation in something a little bit more local within the project. Because to Katie's point, yeah, I mean, we we ultimately want to move them out of the newcomers channel. <laughs> like, we don't, like, leave that channel after a month because you're in the the WG risk channel now. That's because that's where in, you follow. In the in the newcomers channel, um, one thing that I discovered was when I joined the Chaos Slack, I was like, okay, what channels can I join and what should I join? Yeah. Having in there, here's a list of our um, our channels if you want to start exploring. In where do you put that? In, in the in the newcomers, like maybe that being one of the every once in a while things that rolls through is here's our list of other working group channels that we encourage you to explore as you're going through the onboarding or something. Would you be okay if I put that like in participating? Because that's kind of where I... I yeah. Okay. I think that info might also be in the Slack bot, in the welcome bot, if we type maybe, I think. I could be wrong. Okay. I've been cleaning the channels today a little bit. I've been archiving a number of them. So, um, okay. 
but like that could also be like to your point katie like if somebody's in the office hours like one of the things that that i think could be discussed in those office hours is like you're interested in whatever dei like here's the meeting time here's the slack channel that you might want to join and here's the github repository that you might want to star like just start there and then um, that might be helpful too but I, I think to your point too the slack channels actually they do a pretty good job at this point they're pretty well curated list right now it shows you all the things we're working on to be honest with you so just browsing that that channel set shows you quite a few things do we have a specific list like on the chaos site that is oh you want to get involved with the project here that list that you did the like new participating that something like that on there and then maybe um as you're doing the these sections we encourage you to and then have a list of like explore the slack channels um in the participating um in the first one watch some of our previous onboarding videos chat with current members in the newcomers channel we don't. and because that would be something good to have on the site so when i yes agreed and I think that's then yeah. people kind of see what direction they because I remember coming on and going, well, they told me I should go to the badging one, so I'll see what happens when I show up. <laughs> but then if we had like it would have been like it would be cool. Like the more we talk through this, the more I'm kind of liking this because like if you're interested in um again DEI, the pointers can be like, you know, from a computing like a channel computer channel perspective like lock into this meeting <laughs> on zoom lock into this channel on slack and lock into this repository on github those three things should give you pretty good coverage as to how that particular working group does their work you know and and we're all i think we're pretty consistent for all of our working groups now like they all have a channel they all have a github repository and they all have a regular meeting time and so we can just so like elizabeth in the office hours we're like so you're interested in this topic just lock into these three things and hang out for four weeks or whatever it might be just don't worry about <laughs> making contributing a metric in the first week don't don't worry about that just listen because action items will come up. They just in inevitably do. Um, and that's when that, I think you can start identifying those action items. So, um, okay, cool. I also just want to quickly say anybody, anybody in the chaos community that is, you know, at any stage are welcome to join those open office hours. Like if you just want to pop in and see what's happening, if you want to pop in and help out, you know, chatting with newcomers, like it was super helpful to have Sean there yesterday, not putting on the spot, Sean, but no, I, somebody was really <clears throat> interested in um, contributing code and talking about Augur. And so thank God Sean was there and he could really do a deep dive, for yeah. him, um, you know, because they were matching his energy like they were they were with it. So um, that was extremely helpful because I don't know that I would have been able to speak to that. Level. Yeah, I've been I've been coming to those um, whenever I can, which is most of the time, just because a lot of the newcomers are looking to make software contributions. And I know that that's that's I can speak to that. <laughs> so talk, talking through this, too, this has been really interesting because it sounds like we kind of have a first a first set of things, which is like just joining chaos. Like what are the, the project as a giant whole, right? Um, so like, those are the office hours. Those are the identify your working groups, like just as project as a whole. And then what I'm seeing down here, which is really interesting and in contributing, it's almost like we have to re like redo this. So now you're part of risk, like, <laughs> here's, or you're part of DEI, like here are the things that are available to you in this smaller subset of the project. So. Well, and and so one of the, one of the, I, I guess one of the sort of overriding ideas was that when people are struggling, like they want to measure something and, and they don't know really where they want to go, they can explore a little bit, but, you know, let's say somebody gets really active in evolution and they've got a metric that could fit in three different working groups. You know what? Let's let's guide you through doing that in the working group that you're already in. And you know, as long as it fits approximately, don't worry less about 
which working groups and let people choose those working groups for where they put the metrics because we've now on the website successfully we're almost successfully separated the working groups from how we present the metrics right we really have which is good yeah i think that was a really critical step so yeah so matt um, are you saying we should almost have like an onboarding call for a participating level and maybe a call for a contributing level of where like people could show up and be like okay i've been going like regardless of what working group they're in come to the participating um office hours and we'll help you figure out like exactly what you what you want to do next or like what your path is that kind of a thing yes and so the the first couple are just like trying to to help orient people to the particular in this just we'll just say the working groups that they're interested in or working group but then like to what katie had talked about earlier was like you know how we have the like what was your first what chore did you do today or how are you feeling today <laughs> yeah, like yeah. we could ask like what's the best way within this working group for a new member of this working group to to join like what i think that's what i heard you saying katie like you're muted if you're you're muted what would be your top piece of advice for a new member or of this, joining this, of this working group yeah of this really local working group so then so these two participating and exploring are really kind of at the, they're at the office hour level, so to speak. We could do on, on the big weekly call, we could do another one. Like, what is your top, what is your top piece of advice for a new person joining chaos? Mm -hmm. Or what would be, what do you wish you knew when you first joined chaos? Mm -hmm. Like things that we might be able to put on a tips and tricks list for new members. Mm -hmm. So Elizabeth, did that help at all or no? Yeah, I'm still wondering if we should break those up though, because like sometimes people come to those open office hours knowing absolutely nothing about chaos. So it's yep. a very high level conversation. Yep. Other times people come and they'll be like, yeah, I know about chaos, but I have this question about this specific thing about Augur or this specific thing about this metrics or I'm an OSCO. So like, it's it's like a deeper level and and it's totally fine, you know, to, to talk about that stuff. But like, if there are others on the call that aren't at that level, then they just kind of are like super lost. And I know that but I that's see. not really the point of open off, you know, like it's open. So you can I get go, what whatever, saying. but. Um, I'm just wondering if there maybe needs to be a, a medium, like, okay, you've been around chaos a little bit, let's help you figure out what to do next, or like, you know. I get it. Maybe that's where we suggest they reach out to somebody, and we have a list of mentors at that point they can reach out to, once they know where they're at, and what kind of area they want to be in. A list of people willing to be um, a point of contact for new members in each working group. We, we do have that my only my only fear and, and maybe this is un, unfounded, but um, it, it can be overwhelming for people if, if i'm on slack and i'm the contact person for DEI, for instance, I don't think I am, but I don't know. Um, and then I just start getting pinged and getting pinged, you know, like one at a time in direct messages and it's it's fine as long as it's like one person in a while you know but when it starts to become like the volume and i think that was the reason we ended up having the slack bot was because the volume of individual pings and individual kind of trying to interact and trying to make sure everybody like i just am a little bit afraid of the volume and the burden that we place on folks by asking them to be a mentor I mean, it just seems like maybe a lot. I don't know. Maybe and maybe not. Maybe I'm just overreacting. I don't know. Well, I think if we had somebody on the high level, like the chaos top of the umbrella as a mentor, you might get more of that volume. But on the working group level, once they've been there for four weeks or in that process and decide if that's where they want to be, it's going to be a lot smaller number. Like we don't see in the yeah. badging group, we don't see that many people come and go. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And at that point, too, there's more of a personal connection already. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe I'm just, yeah. They'll, that's they'll fair. recognize. Um, and that might be a a once every month thing on the on those calls. We say, hey, this month, this person is going to be our 
our new member mentor or our new member contact next month. It might be somebody else. Like that might, because if we do that, then that's only one month with new people. And that's only two meetings for a lot of the groups. So it's not a, that, that's something small that you might be able to get more commitment on than having a facilitator for a meeting. Who, who would be like to be our, um, like our new member, um, mail, welcome contact this month for October or whatever? Mm -hmm. or like Can you plan it three months in advance so that people know what to when to watch their Slack channel? Or you say, can we get volunteers for the next quarter or something like that? Yeah. Um, okay, so this is this is great. So yeah. <laughs> thank you for there's there's these are all really, really excellent um, comments. Um, Elizabeth, to, to your point on the office hours with the two different levels of people, you know, like just I don't know what chaos is versus I would like to participate in the OSPO working group. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My my hope is is that um that you could do it all just in that single hour. And you could just put a disclaimer up front that says, like, hey, just so you understand that a lot of people are coming at this from different levels and you know, I'm gonna answer questions kind of as they as they come in. And so you know, don't be afraid to ask a question if you're like brand new or ask a question if. And if you have another person on there to help you, Elizabeth, or if we have multiple people on there, you can always, and you have new people come in, you can always set it up so there's a breakout room for anybody interested in XYZ topic. That's a great idea. Yeah. I hadn't really considered that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. And the hope too is like on the office hours, like if somebody's like, I would like to participate in the OSPO stuff, like it, and if they're comfortable with open source community work, like it could be a fairly easy answer. Like here's the repo, here's the Slack channel, here's the meeting time. I suggest you like just plug into those, those three things for the time being. So I, 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 my hope is, is that you can do it in one meeting because I don't want to add more meetings. <laughs> I'm also down with that. I'm totally down with that. <laughs> and maybe it doesn't, maybe it won't work that way. And maybe you are, you'll see yourself. You are the only person I've ever heard that says more meetings are okay. <laughs> so, um, so maybe I, I like this idea, maybe like over the next week or so, we could kind of focus on this part of it, which would be how do we think about, to your point, Katie, like on the Slack channel saying, you know, welcome, here's what we highly recommend you to do is connect in the office hours and watch the onboarding video or participate in the onboarding session if that works for you. Um, and so maybe we just start there you know what i mean and get people to attend the office hours and then from there we continue to build this out i have a, a sorry i know we keep talking about this but um so would it would it make sense to um point people to the quick start on the website in case like we change stuff i don't or does that do, do, am i making sense here yeah, like instead of saying go to this thing at this time, like just point them to the quick start and like that's the single source of truth for what we have going on. Yeah, um, I hadn't thought about that. I mean, we're about ready to have the web meeting, so we could talk about yeah. that. And that would be the like having a tips and tricks type of thing on the website would be that page of having yep. the quick start could have the list of the previous recordings and most have a thing that says the most recent one it can have a thing that says here are the things we suggest you do at these different levels here are some tips that our, free, our members say they wish they would have known when we started here so let's help you out type of page that way literally anybody in the newcomer channel could point somebody to that quick start page like it would I think like not everybody would have to know when stuff's happening they'd just be like oh it's all here go here that was that's kind of my that was 
like having a single source of truth that can be easily updated in one place is kind of what would be easiest. You're muted, Matt. I agree. So let's think about what could be on that page. I, I still like the idea of encouraging people to go to office hours, like this human. Yeah, hundred percent. But it would have like all of the like. Here's the link. Here's the times. Here's how yes, you convert like, to your time yes, zone. If you're brand new. Go to off. Mm -hmm. We still say it there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, okay we are out of time, folks. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was good to see everybody. Okay, uh, bye, everybody. Day. Have a have a good one. And Anita, I'm just gonna stay on this channel, so because I know we're talking after this. So, all right. Bye, okay. everybody. Bye, everyone. And OK, great. OK, well, thank you. That was great. We're making. I feel like we're making progress on this, which is yeah. really good. in the simplest way possible. <laughs> <laughs> Go to a meeting. Um, all right, so Anita, I, I have Elizabeth here just to kind of talk about the interview stuff, just because. Yes. Yeah, because Elizabeth is also working, she's kind of uh, working with the All In Project as well, and obviously working with the Chaos Project. And my hope is, is that we can kind of connect the interview work that you want to do with some of our potential contacts in the All In Project. Now, I'm not sure that this is going to work, but this is what I'm hoping to do. <laughs> so, um, my 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 concern is is that an interview campaign can be a, a lot of work. Like it's just a, a lot of work to do outreach and it's a lot of work to run the interviews. And if if we can, it's a little bit easier if you have a group of people who, for example, are participating in all in and are kind of eager to talk about metrics or ways to think about how metrics can help them around DEI. So it, it helps reduce that barrier and, and smooth the conversation a little bit and make things a little bit easier. The other advantage of potentially working with All In around these questions is that it could really benefit the All In project like directly. Not only would it benefit how we understand our metrics within chaos, but how we understand our metrics as deployed within a potential project. So that's my thought here. Elizabeth, do you want to add anything to that? Or Yeah, so um, I did actually ping Sarah in between meetings. Um, so Anita, Sarah um, Oyatubo is um, kind of the point person at GitHub that I'm working closely with. Um, and so just for some context too, All In has kind of two sections and one is called All In for Students. And that's about bringing students into open source and getting them kind of onboarded onto the whole thing. And the other half is all in for maintainers. And so I'm working with Sarah on the all in for maintainers part of it. Um, and in that, there's the badging, obviously, that you know about the badging. There's also um, a piece that's called our DEI resources hub. So we're trying to like bring a bunch of resources, like highly curated resources there. Um, there's also a part that's going to like match bigger projects with smaller projects to help them on DEI issues. And then the final one is um, providing grants for tooling to help mean to open source maintainers kind of manage things like triaging so they're more responsive, for instance, and more welcoming that kind of thing. Um, now, that being said, um, GitHub is, um, <laughs> I don't know how to say this. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> have it not, not come out terrible. GitHub is a part of Microsoft. We'll just say that. And with Microsoft, there's a lot of, uh, what's the matter? 